Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we've got my uh, next uh, special guest on the show, and I have on the studio uh, line now, we have uh, Mandeep from the West Midlands um, Fire Service. Um, I just want to say, welcome Mandeep to the show, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you for having me. It's great, because I, I, I know you're very busy during this time, so to take time out uh, is much, muchly appreciated. Finally. And the, the reason why I got in touch, I, I, I felt like the West uh, Midlands Fire Service and all the fire services are around the country and around the world, um, they need to get like the recognition that they don't necessarily always um, receive. So that's why I wanted to put the spotlight on the fire service and just to kind of uh, get you on and tell you uh, how much you um, do a great job and to tell the listener what more you do in your role otherwise um, than just like fighting fire. Yeah, no, sounds good, sounds good. Okay, so I'm just going to start from the top. Um, when you were growing up, um, was being in the mm-hmm. fire service something you always aspired to be? Um, not really, no. Um, growing up, I don't think many children know what they want to be. That you know, Some people have a dream, and a lot of people that wanted to be a firefighter do have that dream. But for me, um, I, I did a law degree, and went on to do my master's in management, and then went on to work in IT at the West Midlands Fire Service to start with. So... I worked for um, West Midlands Fire Service in the IT department as a business analyst for about um, just under 18 months before I decided that I wanted to do a little bit more. I wanted to um, I wanted to give a little bit more than what I was giving. So a way to do that was to go into the other side, go in, you know, sort of go on to the the other side and um, train to be a firefighter and and be a firefighter and and take that route for it. But so, no, it wasn't always something that I wanted to do growing up. Yeah. But um, when you're around it, when you're in it, when you're seeing what, what everybody's doing and all the effort that's put in on the other side, um, you really do get close to it. And that's that, That's really what swayed me. Yep. Thank you for uh, answering that question. And um, am I right, you're uh, a tra- training at the moment? I am, yes. Yeah. So I passed out in March. So I've been on station since March. So literally at the very beginning of lockdown yeah um I was on station so it's been a very very weird time um for everybody but um quite uncertain and and things have had to change and measures have had to be put in place but um but yeah so I, I am in training I'm a trainee firefighter at the moment so I still go out on calls I still go out on jobs um I'm just learning um learning the trade if you like so you, you get trained in training school um and then once you're on station you learn your trade and you work with your crew to learn the ins and outs of the job excellent and uh, what are the rewarding aspects of uh, being a firefighter oh um i would say getting to work with um a fantastic bunch of people your the people you work with they're called your crew um and it's really important that you have a good relationship with your crew my crew as they know i'm always singing their praises but my crew are fantastic like i i don't think I could have asked for a better crew to be honest with you so that's really good getting to work with really good people people that care um but ultimately um in a lot of the emergency services jobs not just um in the fire service you you get to help people um when they are at their worst time so we will speak to people we will face people we will interact with people when they are potentially at their at the worst point in their life especially as a firefighter so when you get to help those people and make it better um for them even in the slightest that really grounds you that's wonderful and uh, what other roles does being a firefighter entail a lot of people don't realize that it's not just putting out fires so we attend traffic collisions um we uh, cut people out of cars um in bad traffic con- traffic collisions we um do a lot of work with schools universities fairs we we educate um the public and the community um on fire safety we also educate the businesses around um, around the West Midlands and how to keep their business safe. Um, so it, there's a lot there's a lot of there's a lot of elements to it that are not just firefighting. We, you know, we go to a number of different. We've got an element of water rescue. Um, we go to hazardous material incidents um, where there might be hazardous substances. But a lot of the a lot of the focus at the moment, as well as fighting fires, is the preventing of the fires. So working with um, businesses and homeowners to stop the fires happening yes. in the first place and stop the calls from having to come in um so yeah that there's a there's, it's a really really rounded job it's turned into it used to just be firefighting but it's really really turned into something something a lot bigger now yeah so you've got the school the schools the education the teaching the awareness and also the di- different yeah. scenar- different scenarios like you you may be called to a catapultry or someone stuck in a lift as well 
Stuck in a lift is definitely one. Had one of those yesterday. Um, lovely lady. Um, so we had we had a call of that yesterday. Cats up trees are rare. Um, I think it's a myth. I think that's more on the cartoons. Mm-hmm. But um, <laughs> um, if the RSPCA are involved and they ask us, they request us to come out, then we will attend um, animals stuck. It's not just cats. We get horses, cows. We're our tech rescue team. Um, uh, help those out of yeah. there ditches and sticky situations but um but yeah cat cats will generally come down yeah. on their own given the time yeah they probably just want want to get away from uh, some human interaction sure. <laughs> and um what the west midlands is quite a vast area but what areas of the west midlands do you cover and how, how many fire stations are situated in the region well, we've got 38 fire stations in the west midlands um we i currently i cover erdington so um we've got um a number of different stations that can cover a number of different areas. So they'll be called out to those particular areas. Um, you will be called out to other areas if the incident is is big, it's large, and it needs more than one fire engine there, for example. Um, so we tend to work across the West Midlands, but predominantly um, what we call as a patch, um, which is our station area. And uh, for me, it's Erdington. Okay, great. And um, you mentioned uh, the current situation in the world, the current pandemic. Has has there been yeah. more, more demand uh, pressure on the fire service um, this year in 2020? There's definitely been a lot of um, a lot of change. So we, we've um, in our jobs, we have to respond um, to the unknown. Sometimes we don't know what we're going to face, and and the pandemic was a little bit like that. We had to um, act quickly to implement um, different uh, policies, but regulations, cleaning regimes, um, you know, personnel on station and in our headquarters. So a lot's changed. So a lot of people have had to get involved in um, in making it safe for us to work. Because as, as you probably know, the emergency services were working all the way throughout the pandemic. Um, so and then still are. So mm-hmm. we had to innate, we had to make it so that it was safe for us to can, to continue working and also make it safe for the public because Whereas we would normally go into people's houses and do home fire safety checks, um, fit smoke alarms for for the vulnerable that can't that you know can't put them up themselves. Um, we've tried to hold back and do those over the telephone because we don't want to be taking anything into their home, mm-hmm. if you like. So it's worked both ways. So we've had to be, we've had to implement a lot of change. So um, you know it, it's. It's been it's been nice. It's been lovely to see how the entire West Midlands Fire Service have pulled together to enable that to happen. Um, but it's a time of uncertainty. Yeah. But I think I think we've handled it pretty well. Yeah, great so far. <laughs> and additionally to that question, from a wider perspective, what other activities have the fire service been doing? Um, for example, working alongside the general public. Yeah, sure. So we've had quite a few um, quite a few volunteers. Um, within the West Midlands Fire Service, volunteer um, to put themselves forward to take food packages to those that can't get out to the shops. Um, maybe they're self-isolating or they have some other reason that they can't go and do that. Um, we've worked closely with um, charities and food banks and, and taking delivering food parcels and packages to them. So that's been that's been a massive part of the last um, the last I can't even, I don't know what month of the pandemic we're in, but since March that's that's been um, a massive area that we've had to set up. So there's been a lot of logistical changes, a lot of staffing changes for that. You know, we've had to use vehicles. We've worked with other other partners and other companies um, to enable that to happen. Um, we've had a lot of donations from the public um, as well as from staff within the fire service. So we've worked really closely with the community, the other communities, other partners um, and businesses to enable that to happen so that we can you know, we can go the extra mile and the people that are doing that are all volunteers. So mm-hmm. um, from the fire service. So it's, it, as I said, there's been a lot of change, a lot of change and a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of good happening. Yeah. You, you all do um, a wonderful job and uh, I speak on perhaps like on everyone really. Um, what you just told me there, uh, the, the logistics and um, everything mm-hmm. else in, in, in behind the scenes, you know, um, Absolutely. Um, and uh, on to a couple more questions. And uh, Mandeep, what advice can you give someone trapped in a house or an apartment block, especially if they are upstairs um, or on the first floor? OK, the first thing that they need to, to have in place is their escape plan. Um, so no matter what time of day, night or day, um, everybody in that house needs to know the escape plan, including children. So if you're going to lock, but well, you should be locking doors, um, external doors at night time. 
make sure everybody knows where that key is so that everybody can get out should they need to. So, uh, so the first thing that people need to do is is work out um, as a household uh, what their escape plan is. Um, Secondly, then, so if you are unfortunate um, enough to be um, in a situation where there is a fire in your um, your house, flat or apartment, the first thing, the main thing you need to do is you need to get out. You need to get out and stay out and phone the fire service. Don't attempt to put the fire out yourself. Um, if you can't get out and it's, it's unsafe to get out and you, there's no way that you're able to exit that um, the building that you're in, then you need to close the door to the room you're in to prevent any smoke from coming into that room um, or limit the smoke coming into that room and phone the fire service. We have in the West Midlands a response time of five minutes. So if you phone that 999, um, the station, the closest station will be notified um, and they will be with you uh, within five minutes. So that's the best thing that you can do. But don't attempt to put it out yourself. Don't take any of your belongings with you. Those can be replaced quite easily. Um, get out stay out phone the fire brigade that's, that's valuable um advice there thank you for, for that and deep and finally <laughs> and finally uh we um i was going to uh, ask you um <laughs> are the uh, west midlands fire service presently recruiting and how can people find out more information on applying yeah, they absolutely are. So you can go to the West Midlands Fire Service website. So we're still recruiting. We recruit, um, we've been recruiting at the moment for the last um, couple of years. So it's it's generally a constant thing that's ongoing. So um, go to the West Midlands Fire Service website, um, pop your details in there, have a good read of the website, have a good read of what we do. Have you know, It's not just fires, as I said earlier. So make sure you're completely familiar with everything that we do make sure that it's it is for you um and then go for it there's nothing stopping you wonderful thank you so much for uh, taking time out of your uh, busy schedule to talk to me uh, right. uh, danny son and um thank you for uh, filling in um everything that um you wanted to know about being a firefighter and much much more brilliant now that's it thank you for having thank me you. great stuff